Does monophasic sleep feel unnatural to you? Do you, do you wake up feeling groggy or become very tired around noon or have a hard time focusing on several parts during the day? If any of these apply to you, you may have asked yourself if monophasic sleep really is the natural sleep pattern to humans or the best sleep pattern to humans. And that will be the main topic covered in this mini-series. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower and I'm a main author of polyphasics.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. So this will be a three-part mini-series covering whether polyphasic sleeping is actually healthier than monophasic sleeping. And I just want to start uh, by saying that this is a huge and important question to tackle. And uh, as opposed to our course covering whether polyphasic sleeping is, is more dangerous than monophasic sleeping. Uh, this mini-series will instead be focused on positive aspects to show how polyphasic sleeping is actually at least partially more healthy than monophasic sleeping or in some parts, you know. The topics that we're going to discuss in, the, in this mini-series will not be applicable to every single polyphasic sleep schedule. Uh, because there are very many schedules, there isn't a lot of peer-reviewed research to go on, so uh, on, on uh, polyphasic sleeping specifically. So we need to extrapolate, and you know, it's not just re it's not realistic for us to cover every single schedule here or for all these research articles to be applicable to every single schedule because even the schedule groups are very different from each other so uh, while some research may have been done on nap only schedules or the everyman schedules that still leaves you know the tricore and dual core schedules out it's not just real it's not realistic for us to expect that there should be long-term research on every single polyphasic sleep schedule, unfortunately. So we're going to need to use monophasic uh, articles and just, you know, extrapolate the data from the polyphasic uh, studies that there are. Okay, um, so yes, let's get into this series that we're doing right now. Uh, but before we get into the meat of the post, or the series, it must be said that we don't know for certain if polyphasic sleeping is healthier than monophasic sleeping. Uh, while some points brought up in this post may indicate such evidence, some other parts that aren't talked about in the series may actually say otherwise. Consider the following hypothetical scenario. Um, if taking naps resulted in people living on average five years longer than if they didn't nap, uh, but reducing light sleep by two hours a day resulted in them dying six years earlier. Um, some could then make the case that sleeping polyphasically, taking naps, reducing light sleep by two hours resulted in them dying one year earlier than if they didn't do that. Uh, however, if someone started doing this when they were 25 and they stopped doing this when they were 75, when they uh, died, uh, that would still mean that they had lived or been awake 3.5 years longer than their monophasic counterpart, you know, even if they died a year earlier. So, this is of course very rough, uh, because nothing is black and white. Uh, so, this, post, this, this series is not even going to try to address the whole picture, it's instead going to focus on the individu individualistic positive aspects uh, because that's simply the more realistic option out there. Regardless, remember that the facts presented here aren't the full story, uh, but knowing parts of the truth is still better than going in completely blind, as they say. Uh, in this series, the mortality rate of people will play a large role, um, but some things being positive in the short term, uh, while no long-term research uh, exists, may still also be presented in this series, but in that case we'll be sure to point it out that it's been a very short-term study, okay? In any case, uh, the aim here will be to puzzle together the piece that makes up 
polyphasic sleeping uh, while evaluating each of the aspects. Uh, and the goal, the big goal here will be to evaluate how healthy polyphasic sleeping is and if it's actually more healthy than monophasic sleeping. After having watched this series, you are expected to know more about the positive health aspects of polyphasic sleeping, um, which means that you will have a greater arsenal of points to bring up if someone questions your lifestyle. You know, you've just started a polyphasic sleep schedule and your family member questions whether it's a good option. Well, in that case, you will be able to refer them to this series or just talk about the points brought up yourself so that they may perhaps be a bit easier on you or more accepting of your new lifestyle. Okay. Uh, so this series will, as I said, be split into three parts. This will be the first introductory part. The next part will address polyphasic sleeping directly and what, you know, napping during the day will have as an effect on your mortality or uh, general state of well-being. And the third part will be more like arbitrary, th arbitrary things like the lifestyle that polyphasic sleep necessitates and how that will instead affect your life as a whole or your mortality or your health, general well-being. Okay, so that was all for this part. I look forward uh, towards seeing you in the next part in this series when we will actually, you know, tackle some of the topics brought up. Okay, but regardless, remember to have a good day and nap well, people!